Hi everyone, you're with Tesla Tom and welcome to my YouTube channel where I discuss all things Tesla, electric vehicles and renewable energy. If this is your first time to the channel, hello and welcome. Please take a moment to hit that red subscribe button and that way you stay informed of any new content and it also helps my channel to grow. Today we're going to talk about my 2015 Tesla Model S which experienced the black screen of death. We're going to find out what happened to it exactly and much more right after this. So this week I feared the very worst when the MCU or the media control unit which is the center screen in my 2015 Tesla Model S decided to stop working. What you're about to see is a vlog that I recorded the very next day so make sure you watch to the very end to find out exactly what happened. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Alright guys so um, I am currently driving my 2015 Model S. It has 80,000 kilometers on the odometer. It's got an MCU 1 so the first generation as you can see, it's currently not working, but I'm still driving. This happened last night as I was getting very close to my home. I've noticed that the radio wasn't working, or so I reset the MCU with the two scrolly wheels like this. I've noticed that with each reset, it's taken a lot longer to restart the MCU. And last night, it didn't come back. I gave it a few hours overnight, still didn't come back this morning. And I guess I'm concerned the EMMC or the uh, media memory card for generation 1 MCUs in older Tesla Model S's like mine has failed. I guess that is probably the biggest problem or issue this car has faced so far in my almost four years of ownership of this Tesla Model S. I want to go through what exactly you can and can't do without a working MCU. First of all obviously I can drive. It seems to be driving okay. It hasn't changed. I can even put cruise control on. Um, it's not auto, I don't have autopilot, so it's keeping to the speed okay. That seems to be alright. Um, I can still indicate, uh, and it makes a noise still. Uh, the speedometer is still working fine. One thing I've noticed too, however, is that it's, it's reading, although it says kilometers an hour, uh, this morning when I was driving out, I noticed that the speedo wasn't climbing as quickly as usual, and my son was in the car at the time, and we realized that it's actually reading miles per hour. So I've had to do some manual conversions in my head to make sure that uh, I'm not going over the speed limit, especially in Sydney, we've got lots of school zone speed cameras. The odometer is not showing. Um, the temperature is not showing. It seems to be changing gears okay, drive, neutral, reverse, park. And what does concern me is that the airbag logo is up. So the safety features of the car, I'm not sure about. You know, whether it's, it's got automatic collision avoidance, um, all those kind of things. Uh, regen braking seems to be working okay hold um, braking is okay as well um, so it looks like it's almost like the car is stuck in the last setting from last night when I last had the car in, in full operation so last night when I was charging it seemed to be okay however it was I couldn't slide up and down on my phone app what charge rate I what charge limit I wanted so it was stuck on 80% charge it could only charge up to four kilowatts normally I get up to nine kilowatts with my charger on the phone app itself I couldn't control too much so I couldn't turn the aircon off it was running all night I couldn't change the temperature limit. I couldn't open the frunk, the boot. There was actually a software update pending as well, and that that didn't that didn't happen last night. And I couldn't lock the car either. I, could, I can't open the roof, the the glass roof. Even with my scrolly wheels, I can't obviously access the media player. Um, I can't access the radio, Spotify. All those things, I guess, aren't aren't essential. Obviously, without the center screen, I can't access the rear camera, which was interesting this morning as I was backing out of the driveway. I couldn't, I was so reliant now on the rear camera that I instinctively look at the screen that I couldn't see anything, so I had to use my eyes. Goodness me. What else couldn't I do? Oh yes, uh, suspension was unlocked at normal. So I've got a very steep driveway. I could hear the scrape of the uh, undercarriage this morning on my uh, driveway with these um, menu options. So I, I can't I can't change the aircon uh, with this scrolly wheel. Uh, voice control doesn't work either. Uh, sunroof I can't activate I can scroll up the numbers go up but I can't actually do anything with it so yeah I've got two more days to endure of this Thursday morning mobile service tech is coming out to my place to have a look at it so which leads me to the issue of what it, this actually means so so the signs and symptoms of an eMMC failure which is the memory chip the media memory card is that the computer is slowing down takes longer to reboot uh, controls down as responsive and it seems to be an issue with generation one MCUs with vintage Model S cars like mine, uh, the pre-nose cone ones. I think 
2018 is kind of the cutoff for this happening with your car. Uh, how can you tell if you've got an MCU 1 versus MCU 2? It's easy. Uh, basically, if you've got things like karaoke, you know, all the other different games, the theatre, uh, YouTube, Twitch, all those kind of things. If you haven't got all that, it means you've probably got MCU 1. And if you've got an old nose cone for a Model S like mine, then you've definitely got an MCU 1. At the moment, it's kind of an interesting point in time because my car is out of warranty, which means that technically, if they find a fault with the MCU 1 and my car is out of warranty for the car itself, not the powertrain, but, but for, for the car itself, then I potentially am liable to pay for a new MCU for what some are arguing is a fault with Tesla's chip. So some have been daring enough to say that Tesla put in a cheap memory card that had a, a lower finite number of rewrites. So what Tesla does is that it logs a lot of its transactions the car has with the cloud, so it logs that in the chip. Um, every time it software updates, it logs that as well. So the car's only got a finite amount of rewrites and then it fails. So I think I'm at the point where the card possibly has failed, which requires a whole new media control unit. Tesla might have tweeted or announced that they are rolling out new MCU units, so MCU 2 upgrades for older cars like mine, and there's a schedule, and that was pre-COVID. So now that we're in COVID, I don't know what the schedule is like, whether they're up to my cars or not. I would love to have a new MCU 2. I'm happy to pay for it. I'm not as happy to pay for a replacement MCU 1. I mean, what's the point of putting a MCU 1 with the same failure with the chip uh, and I've got to pay for it potentially. I guess what I could do is if the mobile tech comes out on Thursday and says, yes, your MCU one is toast, you need a new one. Uh, there's a high chance if I've got to pay for it, I'm going to refuse and say, look, I, you know, this is a known issue. And I guess I've always got the Australian consumer law behind me to, to back me up. I'll certainly look into that once the diagnosis has been made by the tech. I'm expecting to see Matt, he's a Sydney rep. He's pretty good. Um, it's pretty honest. So hopefully we'll have a discussion about that. I mean, I, I called Tesla last night, the roadside service. So she reassured me that the car is still safe to drive, hence why I'm driving it today. With the caveat that the speedometer is in miles and uh, the, the airbag signal is up, or the, the icon is up on the center dash. You know, most of the functions here are, you know, lack of a better word, superfluous. I don't really need them for the driving of the car. Like, you know, aircon's nice. Um, having the music and media is nice and all that but I mean luckily I can still drive the car I can still drop my kids off at school and do, do a few errands go to work and I'm thankful that it's um, it's okay it's happening in, in winter and not summer summer's pretty hot here in Australia and uh, I'd be boiling without the aircon I guess I could close, wind the windows down which still works thankfully so you can see there it's working fine um, and it still locks um, and luckily too pin to drive um, Luckily, I guess I'm lucky I reset the car when I was still driving because apparently there's been issues where people have have found the MCU one dead when they've gotten to the car in the morning and it's on a pin to drive setting and you can't unlock the car because you can't activate your pin. So I'm kind of thankful it was frozen in time when I was still driving. So the pin was still off. Apparently you can unhook the 12 volt battery, but I'm not that technical. So I wasn't too keen to do that. This is potentially part one. <laughs> of this issue uh, and I'll certainly keep, keep you up to date with um, with what happens with the service on Thursday. Well I'm pleased to say that as you can see the story has a happy ending. So after I made that video I received a series of texts from Tesla service saying that they were going to do some remote diagnostics from their end including pushing a software update. I could see it downloading on my app but nothing came up on my screen. It hung at 100%. I was then reassured that Matt was going to come out to my place. Matt is the Tesla service mobile rep. And that's always a good sign when the mobile tech comes out instead of you having to go to the service center. Matt arrived and assured me that the service center said that my MCU was still operational and that it was likely just a software issue. So he plugged his computer into my car and after about an hour or so of patiently uploading and reinstalling the latest firmware to my car, hey presto, everything was back online. All my original settings were back as they were. I even received a new software update today with no issues. Matt told me that the MCU was fine and it was just a series of what he called squash errors that caused it to slow down over time and eventually hang. Maybe there were some bad packets or bugs that were hanging around. Most importantly, the eMMC memory card was only about 50% into its life expectancy, which I was really happy about. 
This should mean that my computer should survive until Tesla decide to roll out the upgrades to us old timers. So everything is working as it was previously, possibly even a bit faster and more responsive now that the decks have been wiped clean, so to speak. And because my car was out of warranty, I paid about $200 for the service call, which I thought was totally reasonable considering Tesla did some remote diagnostics and also accounting for Matt's time. Big shout out to Matt also, our Tesla mobile rep here in Sydney, friendly and professional, great guy. He even asked if there was anything else I needed checking out before he left. So all in all, very happy with the outcome. Most important of all, very happy that it was a relatively minor issue with a relative quick fix, all without having to visit the service center. Another big thumbs up to the Tesla service team here in Sydney. Thanks for watching guys, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, I'd really appreciate that. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also, have you had a good Tesla service experience recently? Leave a comment below. Alright guys, stay safe, and until next time, happy charging.